Hi and welcome to another Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this video I'm going to take you step by step through the process that I've gone through to edit this photograph. I'm going to go through step by step, show you exactly how I've done it. I'm also going to make a free preset available to you so you can get to exactly this point simply by clicking on that download link in the description below. So let's take a look at how I process this right from the beginning, right to where we are now. Okay, so this is our starting point. As you can see, it's a pretty cool looking image. There's no real character in there. It really needs to have something done to it. So I'm going to take you step by step through my editing process. As always, stick around to the end because even though the preset gets you most of the way there, there's still some tweaks that we're going to do to this specific image to get it looking the way that I want. So let's take a look at doing that now through the develop module step by step. So what I'm going to do is come over and we're going to open up the basics panel. Everything is reset just to make sure. Let's just hit the reset down the bottom to make sure we're starting with the photograph as it was taken straight out of the camera. Okay, so the thing that I want to do with this is primarily I want to warm it up and give it some more character. So the first and easiest way to do that is to grab the temperature slider and start to move that over to the right hand side where if you take a look we've got on the left we've got blue on the right we've got yellow. So what we're doing is, is by shifting that over to the right hand side we're introducing some warmth or some yellow tone into the image. So just drag that over again this is going to be the kind of thing to taste. I'm going to take it to around about this kind of point. You can see there's already a massive difference there now. We've started to bring in some warmth, probably a little bit more than you would if you were going to leave the image there. But it's a good starting point for the end result that we're working with. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to reduce the amount of contrast in this. So we're going to grab the contrast slider, we're going to drop that down to around about minus 50, somewhere kind of in that ballpark. That kind of flattens the image down and gives us some additional space to be able to do some more of the sort of the stylization that I want to do to this. So next up, we're going to go and deal with the highlights. We're going to drag those down to make sure that we're protecting the highlights in the sort of the hood and also in the clouds. So just drag that down, kind of down about around about that kind of position looks pretty good. And we're going to grab the shadows. We're going to open those up a little bit. Nothing too much. About plus twenty is looking pretty cool. Same again with the whites. We're going to drag those down. We're flattening the image down tonally get a kind of stylized look to it. And next up, we're going to take the blacks and we're going to boost those up a little bit. So we're going to take those up to about plus 25, plus 30, somewhere kind of around there. There we go. So that we're already looking like a much warmer image. We've got some more kind of characteristic into it, flattened it down a little bit, ready to do some other things to this. So let's go over now to the saturation and the vibrance and so on to deal with the overall color of the image itself. Now I want to just give this slight boost in color so we're going to grab that up, we're going to take that to about plus 10. So that'll kind of give all of the colors in the image a little bit of a boost. But now I want to boost the warmer tones. So the things like the leather, the sort of the warmer tones in the overall image, the hay and things like that. So we're going to grab the vibrant slider and we're going to give that a bit more of a bump up to about 25 to 30, somewhere around there. So you can see we start to bring in a bit more of those warmer tones in the image, retaining that warmth. Finally, we're going to grab the clarity and we're going to give that a good boost up to about plus 45 to 50, somewhere around that kind of range to make the definition in the hair and in the sort of the fur and the folds and the leather and so on, just to make those a little bit more pronounced. Obviously, you need to be careful with this sometimes, depending upon the contrast in your image, you may get some weird halo effects. If you do pull that clarity slider back, you're not going to get such a contrasty image such definition between those sort of edges, those contrast edges, but you'll also remove any of those horrible halo effects. So just bear that in mind when you're making those alterations. And there we go. There's the first starting point. So we've warmed it up, give it a bit of a flatter look, and just give it a bit more sort of contrast, even though it's still kind of flat. So let's move on now to the next stage. So the next thing I want to do is I want to crush the blacks. So to do that, we're going to open up the tone curve. We've got the tone curve available to us we need to make sure we're in point curve mode and you can do that by just simply clicking on this little icon in the right hand corner to switch between the two modes I'm going to drop a couple of nodes on there at the intersecting points this is a pretty simple kind of alteration it's something you see in a lot of my videos it's kind of really in fashion at the moment so we're going to grab the darker areas of the image and we're going to give those a good boost up just to sort of flatten those out a little bit. So we're going to find any of the sort of real dark areas of the image. Now we'll take on more of a gray kind of hue. 
couple of little tweaks to this for this specific image. We're going to grab this sort of mid-tone, sort of the mid, well, I say the, the sort of shadow area, not the darks. We're going to just pull that down a tad. We're going to grab the mid-tones. We're just going to give those just a little bit of a boost. And I'm talking a tiny, tiny amount. I don't tend to sort of do too much with the mid-tones unless I want a real kind of stylized effect. And we're going to grab the highlights. I'm going to pull those down ever so slightly. So there's the before and there's the after. So you can see kind of subtle, but it is noticeable in there. It kind of flattens the image and it gives you that more sort of stylized look. And that's all we're going to do with the tone curves. So we're going to leave that there. Okay, we're going to jump over the HSL and the color panel at the moment. We're going to come back to the end because most of the alterations I tend to do inside that panel are to the, sort of specific to the image we're working with. So we'll leave that to the end so you can see how we make some tweaks and alterations to this specific image, which are not necessarily what you're going to want to do, but it's going to give you an insight into the whole process. So we're going to make some split toning adjustments now. We're going to just control the colors in the shadows and the highlights to sort of accentuate this particular image or the kind of the effect that we're trying to create. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring some color in onto the highlights. I'm going to just drag that over. I want to kind of get a sort of purpley mauvey kind of color into it somewhere around about around about that kind of position and not too much in the saturation. So we're just dealing with the highlights at the moment. So we're going to bring this in just to give those a slight purple hue. That's kind of more noticeable now in the sky. So if we just before and after we kind of just apply a little bit of coolness to that we're going to do the opposite now with the shadows we're going to bring some more warmth into those so we're going to take those up to in between the sort of the orange tones just hinting towards the yellows and we're going to bring just a little bit of saturation into that again I'm not going to go crazy because this is just going to warm everything up and round about there looks pretty good so I kind of like that so let's look before we kind of got a green tinge to the overall image and after you can see we bring back especially some real warmth into this leather and into the jacket and the hay and so on so that's pretty cool that's all we're going to do with the split toning section nice subtle change if we want to alter the balance between the highlights and the shadows we can easily use the balance slider you can see we can push it over more to the left hand side which is going to bring more of those warm tones into the shadows or we get to the right hand side and bring some of the cooler tones in from the highlights I say for this particular image, I'm going to leave that in the center because I kind of like the way that looks. So we finished with the split tone and we're now ready to move on to the next panel that we're going to work with. So for this final stage, we're going to jump up to the effects panel. We're going to open that up and we're going to do two things. We're going to give it a little bit of a post crop vignette to draw your attention to the focal point of the image, which is the character stood in the middle. And we're going to add some dehaze in there to bring just a little bit more detail into the background. So let's start off with the vignette. So let's just drag that down. Like I say, I want this fairly subtle with this image, so I'm not going to pull this too far back. Probably around the mid 20s, somewhere around there, so it just suggests drawing your eye into that image. And I say, finally, we're going to just grab the dehaze and keep an eye on the background because this is where it's going to be most noticeable as you get that natural haze effect and the distance, the focal distance on the lens. So let's just grab that dehaze slider and move that up. And you should start to see the background just start to come into a little bit more in focus. We went sort of too far, you can see, kind of gets a weird effect. So we're going to keep this fairly subtle, probably around about plus 15 to plus 20, somewhere around there. So let's look at before and let's look at after. Pretty subtle, but really does help to draw attention into that image. And that's where I'd leave it now. We're going to go in and take a look for some extra steps for this specific image where we'll go into the HSL section and we'll make some color alterations. But this is where the preset's going to take you to. So when you download that, click on it to test it out, you can go in and adjust the color information for your particular image to get the effect that you want. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the saturation for this particular example. And the one thing I want to do is I want to sort of accentuate the colors, the green in the jacket and the brownie reds in the leather and the hair. So the first thing we're going to do is concentrate on the yellows and the greens in this image. So let's go to the saturation. And if we start to take the saturation slider for the yellow and boost that up, not crazy, around about plus 30, that starts to bring in some more color information into the jacket. So there we go, there's that. The next thing I want to do is grab the green slider and we're going to reduce that down slightly. 
So we're going to pull that down to about minus 23, 25, somewhere around that kind of figure, just so we can deal with the green tone in the, the jacket itself. And I kind of like the balance between those two. So next up, we're going to jump down to the luminance section, and this is where we're going to get a little bit more sort of control over things. So let's grab the red slider. You see, we start to bring that down. That's going to affect the tones and the color inside the leather backpack that's on there, and again, also in the hair, and to some extent, the sort of the background where we've got the sort of the warmer tones of the mountains. Next up, let's go to the orange section, and we'll do the same again. We're going to drag that down, bring that down to about minus 30, somewhere around there. The same with the yellows, a little bit more subtle with the yellow. Bringing that down. That looks pretty good. And then finally, we're going to drag the greens down, bring those down to about minus 25, minus 30, somewhere around there. And that kind of gets where I want it to be. So you can see we now have some nice rich tones in the greens and the yellows and the browns and so on. So let's take a look at before. And let's take a look at after. So as you can see, those subtle alterations to the color information really do add up to make a pretty noticeable and kind of nice effect. And there we are. That's all there is to this video. So let's take a look at the before, the image we started off with. Very cool, completely different kind of feel, kind of dull, doesn't really have any real impact to it. And then afterwards, you can see we have that nice sort of kind of retro kind of look to the crushed blacks and a sort of warm tone to it. But it just kind of gives you just a little bit more. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content added every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.